The rumored weapon enhancement skills have been released. Now at first I did only expect missiles to receive them, however all weapon systems have received them and that is very interesting. And I have been telling you guys for a while now that you should save on missiles because missiles will be very expensive because now the missile damage application will be significantly improved. Now today I'll be showing you the skills and I'll talk about the changes that they will do on our ships and basically uh, I'll talk about the balance and the balance patch that will be released very soon. Now let me just double check how how much the missiles cost. I believe the prices have already jumped. The medium missiles were about 12 million. The large missiles were about 5 million. And here I have a bunch of them. This is definitely not my full stack. I have a lot more. Okay, so 15 million is the lowest price on the medium ones. Now let's take a look at the C type. 13 million. Yeah, this this already this already jumped and doubled in price okay and the rapid missiles they were about 4 million now they are at 10 all right i expect that to go up even more so i'll definitely start selling my missiles very soon i have a lot of them and well uh, i need disc and it just so happens that i have been saving a lot of disc for for this moment now uh, the ships feeling, that pilot? I'll show you here will be ships that are, feeling, are all of the, I, I would say, more popular ones, but uh, when I end up testing out the ships with the new skills, I will go one by one. So, uh, how much do the new skills affect my ships? Well, it will make the Bargast even more lethal. The Bargast has basically the highest and the best performing missile performance out of any missile ship and let me go to the skills weapon skills and let's go to the missiles okay let me scroll down now the first skill is the precision guidance this basically reduces the missile explosion radius and therefore improving damage application. Now the description here is a little bit bugged. It should be minus 10%. So uh, for the first skill you get minus 10%, for the second you get also minus 10%, for level 5, and for the last one, for the expert, you get also minus 10%. So technically we, we're looking at a 30% uh, reduction in the explosion radius the next one is improving explosion velocity the faster the explosion velocity the better damage is going to be applied to target and i like to combine small explosion radius with a fast explosion velocity that way your damage on the target will be significantly improved and you also get minus 10 percent or in this case should be plus 10 percent or perhaps even five percent because i believe that the whole uh, description here is bugged but it should give you either 10 or 5% on extra speed. On the advanced you also get a 5 or 10% bonus and on the expert one you also get plus 5 or plus 10%. Now you might be wondering why do I say perhaps even 5%? Well some of the other skills have only a uh, plus 5% per, per skill. Next one missile bombardment, missile torpedo damage plus 5% for the normal basic skill. This improves the raw damage of your missiles, also the advanced one plus 5 for level 5 and the last one expert plus 5 for level 5, so a total of 15% if you have the skill on, on level 5 on all skills. Missile projection, this increases the flight velocity, also important when you have to chase down the target. Well, the missile has to chase down the target, <laughs> not, uh, not your ship, but... You know what I'm talking about. And you get plus 5 and plus 5 for the advanced and for the expert skill. So a total of plus 15%. Missile propulsion, the advanced skill re uh, regarding the missile fuel and propulsion systems mastered to increase the flight time of all missiles. It increases flight time plus 5% for level 5. Advanced missile also plus 5% and the last one also plus 5%. So a total of 15% for all, uh, all of the skills overall. 
definitely something good that happened. Very nice that we have received those skills. And they cost about 200 million to buy, so obtaining them might be, you know, uh, heavy on the wallet, but in the end it definitely will be very much worth it. So, uh, the barriers currently, we're here, here we're going to take a look at the stats of the large missiles. So basically, you can expect a plus 15 and plus 30% boost on the, on the stats. The DPS will be increased, although the raw DPS on the ship will stay about, well, about the same, although it will be up plus 15% if I have all skills on level 5. Overall, it is a DPS boost that that missiles did need. Now the Bargast already worked really well, this ship has been buffed in one of the recent balance patches, basically it is very similar to the Typhoon, al although I believe the Typhoon still has better damage application than the Bargast, but now with the skills the Bargast can have Typhoon 2 level performance with the damage application and it can also have the same or even better raw paper DPS. While the Typhoon 2 uh, is still going to be the ship with the best missile damage application because, you know, the ship also gets buffed and it will be even more scary. That means you will be able to do more damage to small fast targets, you will be able to do the missions faster and it has the chance to change a lot of builds after all. Now, with the extra application, the ships will do more damage and there might be less of a need to use some of the extra modules. And here I'll just show you the stats of the Typhoon 2. Now, this Typhoon 2 has some ridiculous rigs that most players will probably not use, although I like to combine the attributes of a lot of different rigs so that I can get the best out of the missiles and this Typhoon has such a build. I used to run a ship like this a long time ago, but nowadays I don't really use ships with a lot of integrations anymore because there is no need for it. And the next one, the Raven. The Raven is notoriously known for the worst missile damage application in the game. And this new th these new skills will definitely help the ship to apply more damage. There is a chance that the Raven will become even uh, even better in some aspects. Perhaps a lot of players might actually switch to the Raven because the extra bonus from the skills have the chance to make this ship very interesting. Now, of course, it's definitely not going to help with the siege mode. The siege mode is useless. So, uh, yeah, don't use the siege mode on this ship against anything smaller than a capital. Although, without the siege mode, you can get some pretty good stats now with this boat. And overall, the Raven Striker is known to be tanky. The tank is one of the main traits for this ship. And uh, it will be interesting to see how the Raven will perform when I start using this ship with the skills. But overall, I expect a decent, uh, decent boost. Now, for the smaller ships, for cruisers, Cruisers will be able to eat frigates even better now, especially with the normal medium missiles and rapid missiles on the Ortos will be extremely lethal now for the smaller boats, even the medium missiles are still quite terrifying, but a Ortos with rapid missiles with light missile launchers is going to eat small things very, very hard and I'm definitely looking forward to see what this boat will be able to do, perhaps now flying the Ortos will be much more enjoyable and here is the build with the rapid missiles and again you can take a look at the stats of the rapid missiles again the Mordor ships have the fastest missiles and the skills improve speed, application, damage, they, they improve everything on missiles so Mordor ships will become even more lethal and you have this build with torpedo launchers that has the highest possible DPS it will help at eliminating uh, cruiser class, spell cruiser class ships, even better, and it might be uh, started to be a bit more effective against small ships as well, but the torpedo launchers are mostly for big targets. And now on to the frigates. It just so happens that I have a Garmor here, and this little boat, well, it already had some fantastic damage application and some fantastic DPS, but with the new skills, well, as with the previous ships, this little boat will be 
even more lethal. You can expect a plus 30, plus 15 percent boost on all the stats with the torpedo launchers, so with the rocket launchers, or with the normal light missile launchers. The damage on this little boat will be enhanced, and you can expect this thing to pop frigates, although the the armor is already popping frigates and interceptors left and right, but now the the armor will be even more lethal than it uh, than it used to be. Same can be applied to the Condor, and same can be applied to all frigates that use missiles. Same thing can be also applied to all cruisers with missiles, although we don't have many of them, but it can be applied to those as well. Overall, the missile boats benefit a lot from this update. And now, let's take a look at the gunnery skills, because uh, even, even turrets have received their own category of skills, basically totally new skills. And well, I will start with turrets, with projectile turrets, uh, with the Macario, and of course, I will show you how the skills look, and I'll go one by one because there are skills that affect projectile turrets, and there are skills that, are that affect lasers and uh, railguns. So you go to the weapon category, and you scroll down, and you go to gunnery, and here you can see the new skills: motion prediction. This is for for projectile turrets. Tracking speed plus five percent. Actually, my apologies. This is for all turrets. And you get a plus 15% bonus if you have all skills on level 5. Control Burst. The Control Burst is for lasers and for railguns. Basically, it does reduce your capacitor usage on the lasers or uh, railguns. Minus 5% per skill. Total of minus 15% if you have all three skills on level 5. Gunnery. Turret damage plus 5%, it affects all turrets. The advanced gunnery also plus 5%, and the expert also 5%, so a total of plus 15% extra damage. Sharpshooter, this increases the turret open range plus 5% on level 5, so a total of 15% increase in range for, for the 3 skills if you have all of them at level 5. Trajectory analysis. This improves the accuracy falloff, it uh, affects uh, all turrets as well, mostly going to benefit projectile turrets, I believe. And you also get a plus 5% per skill, or a total of plus 15% for all three skills on level 5. Again, uh, very nice. Now the tracking will be much better, and the big boats have a greater defense against small ships. They also have better range and overall better DPS. Okay, uh, here you can take a look at the projectile autocannons or projectile turrets on the Macario, and here you can take a look at the artillery cannons. You can expect a plus 15% boost on uh, all stats, which honestly is nice, and uh, should be quite noticeable in combat, or in PvE, depends on the type of combat that you do. Now, the Capacitor reduction will be very important for the Apocalypse, and it will be very, very important for ships that tend to cap themselves while shooting. The Apocalypse is a AMR ship, and they are known to have good capacitors, but the Apocalypse with Beamers is known to quickly lose capacitor, especially if you use some of the power-hungry implants, so the skill will help you at maintaining a more stable rate of fire. Basically, it will improve the capacitor runtime by about 15%. About 15%, again, it depends on the level of skill that you have, which, you know, is a pretty decent uh, bonus. Same can be applied to the Vindicator. You can expect the range on the railguns to be vastly improved, although the Vindicator is not really a ship that uses the rifled railguns. This is a ship that uses blasters, and blasters already suffer from a uh, poor range, so the extra range that you get from the implant will be, uh, that you get from the skill is going to be extremely useful for blasters. You might get about 30 km falloff range, or even 35 km falloff range, which is nice. Same thing can be also applied to the cruisers. The cruisers will get a very nice buff across the board, and overall 
uh, the Cinnabal is going to feel about the same, although I feel like the Vigilant will definitely receive a, uh, a very notable uh, buff. No, the Vigilant didn't really have any problems. Uh, I really like the enhanced range. It will make kiting a lot easier, or it will make the brawling a lot easier, because again, blasters have a very short range. And for the lasers, we have the Phantasm. The Phantasm is known to be a tank kill cruiser, excellent for PvP, excellent for PvE, excellent little boat for storyline missions or encounters. And with the reduced capacitor usage, the Phantasm will be uh, even more capacitor stable, which might actually allow you to do uh, a different build, might allow for a lot of different builds actually, because now the ships will perform in a slightly different way just so that you have the, the opportunity and chance to test out a lot of different builds. I personally prefer the Phantasm with the Pulse Lasers, although you have several builds and some of these builds include the Beam Lasers, but the capacity usage will definitely be noticeable and the other third buffs are also going to be noticeable. Now on to the frigates. Well, the Dramiel is still going to be the Dramiel, this little boat is still going to be very lethal. And the Dramiel with the small projectile cannons, with the long range ones, the artillery cannons, is going to be even more effective now because you can sacrifice some of the rigs that you used for extra range for something else now, basically extra DPS, extra tank, depending on uh, what you want to do with the ship, so the Dramiel will definitely be a better kite now. I have 11.7 km optimal. With the buff it will be about 13 and if I change the build and implant a little bit I can get about 25 km range with the small projectile turrets and that is honestly really good for a small fast frigate. The Daredevil will benefit from the extended range, although the Daredevil loves to orbit at zero, so uh, in some cases if you use the Brawler build then it's going to be about the same, but the Kite Daredevil will enjoy a very nice bonus on the on the range. Basically uh, you can sacrifice the combat trick for range for something else now, because the skill will give you the range that you need and now you can push for more DPS or push for more tank, you have one rig free, 13 km, that can easily be 16 km, and with the implant, with the right implant, about 17 km, so the kite turtle is going to kite even better, and that is very, very nice. And that leaves us with the Phantasm, and the Phantasm is also a widely popular ship for PvP and PvE. And same rule for the Phantasm can be applied to the to the um, to the Succubus. The Succubus will enjoy the extended range. The beam laser Succubus is going to be even more lethal now because you will you will be able to have about 20 km range. And that is uh, some pretty impressive range for a frigate. You also have an afterburner bonus, which allows you to orbit at a very high velocity, so Hitting this ship will be a little bit more difficult now. And now let's take a look at um, at other interesting interesting skills that have been added. So, like I mentioned before, the carriers also received a bunch of new skills. And I believe we also received some resistance rigs, uh, resistance skills that I'll take a look next time. But here we have the Astarte, and the lightweight ships have also received some some very interesting uh, skills. The lightweight ships have actually received the most skills, as you can see here, which is very interesting. Uh, the carriers also have received some new skills, I'll be taking a look at them in the next video, but first let's focus on the lightweight ships. So. Lightweight ships are a bit more different from the fighters, they're basically lightweight ships, as the name suggests. Lightweight ship defense, plus 10% effective hit points for the first one, advanced gives you plus 10% for level 5, and the, and the expert also gives you plus 10%. So a total of a 30% extra effective hit points for the lightweight ships, 
light worship combat plus five percent light worship damage for uh, level five and for the advanced also level five for uh for the maximum skill and expert plus five percent for level five as well so a total of plus five plus fifteen percent light worship navigation this increases the light worship flight velocity by five percent for level five advanced skill is the same and the expert one is also the same so a total of plus 15 percent extra speed for your ships lightweight ship gunnery it will increase the turret tracking speed by five percent for level five for the skill the advanced will also give you plus five percent for level five and basically the expert also plus five percent for level five a total of 15 percent for all uh skills combined very interesting uh definitely a pleasant surprise for for the lightweight ship for the um, versatile assault carriers and let's take a quick look at the starter here so i have 6.6 thousand dps now you haven't seen uh the rocket bonus which is interesting because i have the theory that the um, rocket bonus on the rocket lighter ships is going to be counted from the previous uh, from the previous skills on the missiles so uh, one thing that i have to test out and i will once uh, i get the chance to currently uh, the currently the game is a little bit bugged and i'm waiting for the for the game to be fixed uh, so that i can properly uh, do tests again but we only have received the turrets, the third bonus on light ships, but we haven't received the rocket bonuses. So I have the theory that the rocket bonuses from the previous skills that are new will be carried over to uh, to the light ships, which will be interesting because currently the rocket light ships are the the strongest in terms of the applied DPS and they have the fastest clear time. So uh, that that was the that, that was the starter. Basically, uses only turrets. Let me take a look at the other versatile assault ships. The Anaconda and Vizago have the highest DPS. By the way, they have the highest bonus on on the lightweight ship uh, on the lightweight ship damage plus ten percent per skill level on turrets and missiles, which you know is pretty good and actually pretty awesome. Uh, for those two ships. That's why they are one of the more popular ones. Okay, uh, this is the Anaconda and let's take a look at the build for this boat. So, the Anaconda is using the Corax Assault ships, the lightweight ships, my apologies, not the Assault ship, not the Assault version of the Corax, but the lightweight Corax. And they are using missiles. And here you can take a look at the stats, overall pretty good stats. And when the when the skill starts working, the overall improvement should be quite noticeable. And I am very curious to know uh, how much it will change the DPS. It will change the applied DPS a lot, I believe. So the lightweight ships, especially those with missiles, have the potential to be vastly superior to those lightweight lightweight ships that use turrets or turrets. Uh, turret ships and speaking of turret ships let's go to the next one I think the next one will be the villain now the villain has some pretty good DPS as well and I built these ships to have ab about the same DPS I tried to balance them out back when I was testing them out and overall uh, I am fairly satisfied with their performance they are crazy tanky and they are very fun to fly although uh, they are very expensive to to add but the lightweight ships with the buff now are definitely going to be a very very interesting i feel like small ships <laughs> i really feel like small ships will have a very hard time when i say small ships i mean uh interceptors frigates because now with the enhanced tracking and with the enhanced application those small ships will be eaten very quickly and I, I think that is one way one one way I guess to balance things although the balance patch is still uh, up ahead and for the balance patch you know there's a chance that they might actually literally rewrite the whole game in the balance patch that's 
how much of, of nerfing might happen. And I'm actually all in for heavy nerfs. I, I think it's about time to nerf some things because uh, some of the some of the ships and some of the weapons are just ridiculous. The implants, as we have been saying for for months now, uh, need to be vastly nerfed. And well, let's take a look at the at the last assault ship. This is the the Vazago, one of my favorite ones, and. This one has 7.2 thousand DPS. This one uses bombers. So when I test out the the lightweight ships and the skills, this is the ship that I'll be using with the frigates, with the missiles, just to see what's the difference is going to be. After all, at the moment, bombers for the lightweight ships have basically the best applicable damage. The bombers and the missile the stars have the best possible lightweight ship DPS. All right, well, that was uh, that was the first part of uh, of looking at the new skills. Next time when I come back, I'll be taking a look at the carrier skills, and I'll be taking a look at one of my favorite new skills, and they are the tank skills. The tank basically increases your ship's resistance and overall uh, hit points, which you know is very interesting so with that being said stay safe fly safe and i will see you very soon stay safe